middle of the rice fields in Bali for an interview with the amazing Shiva Rajaya, who's a fantastic teacher of Tantra, transformation, personal development, mastery of life. Welcome to Shiva's temple. <laughs> Welcome back to Heart to Heart with me, Shakti Sundari. This morning, I have the pleasure and the delight of being in this beautiful space with the most beautiful man, Shiva Rajaya. 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 Yeah. Rajaya. 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 <laughs> and it's great fun because I'm sitting in his swing and it's red and I'm red and he's red. Mm. And we're just going to explore being together and meeting in his space and see what emerges, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to be here. Thank you for, um, I feel honored to have your visit here. Come and check my temple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited, actually, because we came to one of your, um, well, we came to a bit of your workshop the other day. Yes. And I've only seen a little bit of you on YouTube before that. So I don't know much about you, Shiva, but I've experienced you. And um, just walking into your temple here, I'm struck straight away by all the words. Mm. All the words yeah. around us. What are all these words? <coughs> well, if you look at uh, the, the place, the house is, uh, is an octagon, right? It's, it's a crystal. It's like what we are in right now instead of being like a pyramid shape it's a different form of crystal but it's still a crystal and um, the way the place was initiated is like creating a gate of transmission or a gate of activation it means that the idea is when you come into this space your life is being transformed by just being in this space changed and um, so the the words are anchor points mm -hmm. for very specific concepts or energies. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, if we take uh, clarita or magus, magus is for magic, right? We go, or we take the, the word like uh, libertas, libertasa, libertasa, yeah, unita. It's calling, it's calling uh, core. Um, vibrations or frequencies that we need in our system and so when you write a word and you put it on your wall it's like you are teaching your personal environment how to reflect that quality to you everything every object in your life is going to reflect a certain vibration a certain emotional um, yeah commentary or a mm. certain emotional comment mm into your system and reflect that to you and so we have the power to create environments which are very consciously designed you know, if you live inside a crystal it's like <laughs> that reflects a certain degree of harmony that we want to bring into our lives and so adding the words is adding this quality of awareness and uh, identifying the the core values that i want to function with and the core values that i want people to receive when they come into that space it's all an experiment. You notice also that I use different colors. For instance, I use the black, mm -hmm. I use the red to activate, activate what I call a fire circle. And then upstairs, there is another temple space. What is there? And so I use the gold, I use the silver, and then there is the sacred geometry over there as well. Yeah. So each, each object is anchoring a certain, uh, you know, a certain vibration or a certain frequency. The ankh cross and the infinity, infinity sign, you know. Yeah. And uh, when you look at those words, you know, something else is that <coughs> the aesthetic value could be higher. You know, I could, I could put more beauty, I could make it more. But um, the, the, the consciousness that is contained in them is there. Uh, what's, what is this? What's, what's on this? Um, yeah, these this are uh, sets like that I'm, uh, I've been playing with, activating now. I use the word, um, a word, now an identity, that I call the Asisa. Asisa? Asisa. What does that mean? So you have Isis, you know, the ancient goddess of, of Egypt, and then you have 
Isisa, which is the actualized form, the way it came to me in, um, in the pyramids in Egypt. And then I went into the white desert and I kept reactivating that, that form. So that temple is a lot dedicated to this ancient goddess mm. energy. Okay. And um, a few, uh, a couple of months back, the, the word Isisa started evolving towards Asisa. And I realized that Asisa became like a, a male version or my own identity within that field. Okay. So it's a, you know, I'm still called Shiva, but I have different different identities that I play with, like you are uh, uh, Shakti Sundari, right? And so... Um, so you're Shiva or Ajaya. Ajaya is, is like the king. Yeah, the yeah? victorious king. king. The victorious king. Uh, I use also the word victorious fire. So my system, I call it Rajaya Tantra. So it's the teaching of the victorious fire. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so fire is something that we played with in your workshop. Is that is fire the element that you feel most drawn to or that you play with most in your work? Yeah. Yeah, and basically, yes. Yes. I don't know why it came like that. I think it's because it's the, the element for Shiva. You know, it's the fire that transforms, that change, that destroys. And, uh, you know, we are a bit afraid of the word destruction, but we don't have to. We can, uh, the, the word destruction is actually a very powerful thing because it's like, if you own that, you own the renewal power, mm. the transformation power in your system, mm. then it, uh, it allows you to be in a, in a state of clarity and mm. freshness mm -hmm. and being reborn a little bit every day. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah, so fire is like, it's one of the core qualities that you get here. <laughs> want to play but <laughs> it's good <laughs> yes very inviting to playfulness yeah i know um so yeah where can we go now so these codes you talk about codes um and mantras quite a bit um what is the significance of these codes for you <clears throat> well imagine that we um we are like we function with programs, right, as human beings. That our thought patterns, our belief systems, what we do in life, is not just something that happened like that. It's actually codes that were imprinted in human consciousness by forces that are much vaster than ourselves. So, you know, gods and goddesses, angelic hierarchies, you know, we can we can look at, at this without going there. Imagine that it's just like forces that are much vaster than humankind, that have that traveling across the galaxy, that are, that are actually um, evolved like five million years ahead of us. We can consider also human-like races, you know, that populate the galaxy. So imagine that right now we are being watched by beings that are way, way more advanced than we are. We have the power to access transmission, telepathic transmission inside of us. And then suddenly you wake up one morning and you go like, oh, you know, and you start being inspired to create a new language, like the Sanskrit language 3,000 years ago maybe. I don't know when it started exactly. Yeah. But suddenly there is, there is an energy that embodies itself mm -hmm. and that is being transmitted into humankind. And that takes the form of a language. And in this language, you have codes of light, mm -hmm. certain frequencies that are anchored. Like the, the Sanskrit language is not just a language for practical things. It's not just for going to the bakery and buying bread. It's like, it's describing the dynamics of the universe. Yeah. So do you know, are you sort of um, intimately acquainted with Sanskrit? Have you studied it? Uh, yeah, 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 but by myself, you know, I didn't study grammar, I didn't, st I studied the calligraphy and very simple ways of using, so I used the, the Sanskrit language, but now I go back, I go back to using something that is more uh, Latin, Spanish and French inspired, mm -hmm. but it's also a new, a new, new, new language, you know, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, if I have to, to use a certain word, I will tune into the frequency and then identify a word that is a new code that doesn't exist yet. Right. But it's inspired by the existing languages already. Right. So that's what we see all around us here in this yeah. beautiful space. You're actually kind of downloading and uploading yeah. at the same time, yeah. creating this new transmission. Yeah. And that's, I wasn't even aware that that was part of 
what you do. I had this idea of you very much as being this person who, um, you know, you do these daily or very common um, videos yeah. on YouTube, which talk about energy and breath and tantra and relating and all of this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What is it that you're most passionate about in what you're doing? Well, the, the, the place where the passion anchors itself is like, we see, I mean, I see that we are one human race and uh, we are evolving together. So I come from a place of naturally wanting to serve and wanting to help humankind and the planet evolve in whatever way I can, you know, just help. And so this is, this is the passion, the place where it comes from is like, if you and I are having a co coaching conversation or you come to uh, an event or something, I will look at you as uh, be like, what do you need? How can I help you? And then I will be like, wow, well, you know, what would help you is maybe here, have some, some drink, something that will pump you up or here, try this breathing or try this code or try this word, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I will try to give you tools that are going to help you evolve. And the goal is like, First, it's energetic optimization of your system on different areas, on the area of sex and relationships and uh, love life and social life, then uh, the body, the mind, money and spirit. So it's five branches. It's very specific, you know, it's not just anything. So I will check where is the area where your, your being can get a boost. Yeah. And then I will look at that and then try to identify the, the empowering tactics that we can use to bring to bring you in deeper alignment and frequency with your highest potential. And so if we do that on a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we, we do that in a group and then we do that on a larger scale on a planetary level. Whereas when I record a video, then I, you know, it, that video might be impacting on the lives of, you know, thousands of, of people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's the idea. That's my passion is like to, to broadcast, to transmit, to, to help people around the world and um, help us evolve. <laughs> And all these amazing tools that you call upon in yeah. your coaching and in your workshops, you know, what are the different strands of uh, technique tools that you work with? Um, <clears throat> a lot of what I'm doing right now is inspired by, by Tantra and Yoga. So, you know, I have a source which is like the source of the, the Ganges in the Himalayas, a very specific place where I go back to, where you have caves and you have places where it, you go and some of these caves are really like broadcasting stations. You, you sit there and you go because people have been activating these places to become really points of anchoring and transmission. Mm. And so, you know, I sit down there, I go through these valleys where you have invisible beings really helping the, the process and guiding the experience. And then you get the insights and then you go like, okay, well, this is what I have to go back, bring back into the world. So there is, there is that, you know, there is the, the Tantra, there is the ancient mysticism from Egypt, you know, that I actualize today. But basically anything that, you know, it's a mix of lots of different traditions. Like I use, sometimes I will use some Sufi traditions, some Sufi techniques, sometimes it's going to be Christian mysticism uh, inspired. But right now it's the, the vital Tantra system, you know, you have something that I call the vital Tantra. Uh -huh. So that's, that's the system that I'm developing. But within that, the Vital Tantra aims at optimizing the different parts of your life. Once you're optimized and you enter into, the, into service for the planet and humankind, then you go beyond, beyond the Tantra, you go beyond that, and that becomes direct transmission from codes, which then you are released into, <laughs> into your own expression. Mm. And, uh, you know, I use terms like galactivation, uh, you know, because I feel that where we are evolving to is like to become, we are preparing ourselves for space travel. And space travel, I don't mean physical space travel. It means that our consciousness has the power right now to activate itself to the point where our center of reference for our consciousness becomes the galactic core. It's not even anymore our sun. It's like we have enough understanding right now to realize that there is a convergence of energy that where the center of our universe is no longer our sun. You know, it's like there is a higher point of power and energy which is developing itself in our consciousness where we go like, wow, okay, 
there is a point there. Mm -hmm. And so I use terms like galactic grid, galactic hierarchy, yeah. galactic core, you know, and I feel like there was a very specific shift in my consciousness at one point where I, I feel like I went from being Earth-based uh -huh. to being galactic-based. Yeah. And since then, my roots have been growing into <laughs> into space. Yeah. I know it can feel like a bit strange because, you know, we are breaking the, the traditional frames and you go like, oh, that guy is really losing it, you know, but I it's like, really got it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, think about it and uh, think about the fact that we're on this tiny little planet in the middle of this vast universe and we go like, there is no consciousness beyond there. We are the only point of reference for intelligence on this vast universe, you say. It doesn't even make rational sense. Why would we be the only ones, you know, existing there? So imagine that suddenly we open the space to the possibility that there is intelligent forms beyond the planet Earth. And we look at it beyond the, the, the romanticized forms of aliens coming and shaking hands with us. We, we look beyond that and we look like intelligence as much vaster fields like nature and, and the sun, solar intelligence, the solar logos. And we look at beings that are actually omnipresent in different parts of the galaxy or different parts of, of our universe. So is know. that something you, you are very much tapped into, like dimensions beyond just this yeah. yourself? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. And uh, imagine that in those beings you have thousands or millions of human-like races mm -hmm. in the galaxy or beyond the galaxy. But let's look at the galaxy. And imagine that in those millions or thousands of human-like races, some of them are much more evolved than us, like three million years ahead of us. Imagine where we will be three million years from now. Maybe we would be able to telepath and, and transmute and transform and be in eternal bodies and be like, you know, traveling across the universe, just, put, you know, it's like we would have developed uh, uh, abilities and technology that we cannot even dream of. Imagine in a hundred years what we did. We, do, we went from not being able to fly to yeah. take a rocket to the moon and bring back human beings from there. And now we are communicating through telepathic objects, creating brain energy waves that allow us to be synchronizing with the rest of the planet instantly. Yeah, it's, amazing. yeah, and this is just in 100 years. So imagine that we speed up the process of evolution and we have been speeding up really big, big time over the last 100 years. Imagine like, 500 years from now, what, what will our technology look like? It's crazy, right? And so we are taking such big leaps that right now we are, the, the possibilities are just infinite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hoop. Here we go. Okay. Bond's not in properly, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have a house where uh, instead of looking at it from a practical perspective with table and chairs and couches, turn the space into a play playhouse, you know, where you can really enjoy and have fun and, and create more, more activity in it. That's the whole idea. <laughs> it's fun, right? Great fun. What do you okay. prefer, sitting on the couch or being on the swing? Being on the swing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yes, very inviting to play from this. Yeah.